is it going boys and girls welcome back to QS Waterman how is it going boys and girls welcome back to Key West Waterman my name is Aaron Young it is a beautiful day here in Key West one of the days I blocked to film and finally some good weather so we're gonna go dive I got my good buddy Ross with me if you've been around for some time you know Ross he's uh probably the biggest fan of Wahoo of anybody on the planet he's been in a few episodes way back when anyways I'm craving fried snapper. I don't know why, so we're gonna go look for some snappers first. We may end up doing a blue water drift or two, but we're gonna kind of get out there and see what the conditions look like and go from there. I kind of would like to shoot a Kubera snapper today. I don't know why. Maybe check a couple Kubera spots, but um, weather looks good. Let's rock and roll. <laughs> All right, first spot, not much, just some subtle hard bottom. Um, Gonna throw a little bit of chum in and take a peek. Yeah, there's a little bit of a current, so we'll just hang off the D-rings and do drops. Welcome back underwater, everybody. If you have not already, be sure to hit the like button. It helps a ton. So I'm going to share my thoughts on these dives as I always do. Um, this was a really, really enjoyable day for me. I felt like I hadn't dove in a while. It was probably a week and a half, which for me is a long time. First drop of the day. You can see all the groupers here. My goodness. Love seeing how healthy the population is. Um, so because if you're not familiar, groupers are closed here from January 1st until April 31st? 30th. Um, but so we're mainly looking for snappers. Nice snapper there. I was real patient with that shot. I'm very particular about my shots. If you've watched for a while, uh, I try not to t ever take anything in the meat if I can help it. Uh, and I brain and bleed as always. If you're wondering why I brain and bleed, it's for meat quality. Ross! Ross! There's a bunch of mangroves and a bunch of big, juicy black groupers. <laughs> In my opinion, braining and bleeding helps meat quality. Not only getting the blood out of the meat, but I think if you leave a fish alive and it's kind of beating around in the boat, I think it can bruise up the meat and um, I, I definitely think it's noticeable. I don't have any scientific evidence to prove that, but this is my second drop. Uh, first spot again, just kind of scanning. Visibility was decent. You can see some groupers taken off there. If you're watching this on a big screen and you pay attention and try to count the amount of groupers I saw this day, it was very, very refreshing to see how healthy the population is. I've never doubted it, but just a good reminder, good happy reminder for me. Nice mutton here. Waiting for him, waiting, waiting on that turn, and he gives me the perfect broadside. Love me a good stone shot. And I always try to bring the fish to me, if I can, before I ascend. Um, a dangling fish is just asking for a shark, and typically if the fish is stoned, you're not going to have as much problems, but if the fish is alive and you're, you're dangling it on the way up, that typically draws unwanted attention. Even though I stoned that fish, I double checked just to make sure. A lot of times you hit a nerve and it seems that you stoned them, but they're still alive. I wasn't really getting the rush of blood I was looking for, that's why I kept doing that. And I forgot to mention, I don't know why, I just kind of had a brain fart. That last clip, I loaded my gun with the fish still on the spear. A lot of times I do that before I take the fish back to the boat because loading your gun 
kills a lot of your oxygen. So if my gun's loaded before I swim back to the boat, I'm kind of starting to relax and get a jump start on my breathe up beforehand, if that makes sense. Um, I think I do it a couple times in this episode, but wanted to mention that. Another nice mangrove. Wait until he's completely broadside. Nice grouper under that ledge, man. It was it was tough watching these things swim around. In the wintertime, we get so obsessed with Wahoo, we don't do a ton of reef diving, not nearly as much in the summertime. Um, so I normally don't have to look at these things swimming around, but... So I actually had a band pop, and I have spare bands in the boat. I just didn't want to hop back and find one just yet, so I decided to do a drop with one band. And then it ended up being kind of fun because it was a little more of a challenge. I had to get a little closer to fish, um, be a little more, I guess, patient with my shots because I don't. It's not going to come out as fast, and it's not going to go as far. So I ended up rocking one band the rest of the day and I actually had a good time with it. This is still the same spot. We're still in the first spot. And because I had one band, I was very, very nice grouper there. Very patient with this. Kind of had that down on top of his head angle, which is really easy to hit that fish high and kind of just take a chunk out of his head and tear out. Um, so I was super patient with this shot waiting for the snapper and I was pretty mellow so the fish stayed pretty mellow I just waited till he got broadside and there we are you can see I let my gun get out away from me I see a lot of people try to grab the gun and the line and the fish all in the same hand there's no real reason as long as your gun floats in my opinion no real reason to keep it all together there. You're just asking for a big tangle. We're, go we're gonna move. That's enough fish from one spot. That was not a bad first stop. It's hard to tell in the video how big these mangroves actually are, but we're a size 12, and man, was I happy to see those. Snapper fix accomplished. On to the next. Second spot, very similar, a little deeper. I'm essentially just hunting hard bottom today. I'm looking for mangroves and other snappers. There was a lot of groupers on that last spot. I don't know if the video picked it up. That was kind of painful to watch them swim around, but looking for snappers. So mainly hard bottom today and I'm just doing a little bit of chumming. Let's take a peek. So I don't know if I explained it. We're diving off the back of the boat because there's a decent amount of current. If you're trying to breathe up and swim without holding on to something, you're kind of, it's counterproductive. You're not going to get a, the, the full potential of your breath hold. Um, when you're trying to fight the current. So we hang on the back of the boat and pretty much drop straight down, come up, swim back to the boat and take turns that way. And I actually missed my mark a little bit with the anchor here. I was a little off the spot. You can see I land on sand. There was a nice mutton briefly up there, kind of comes in. I've got one band that fishes out in a way. I'm not going to make that shot. I'm going to poke him and he's going to take off. May get lucky and stone him. And here's the mangrove I'm looking for. I love mangroves. I think of all the snapper there, probably my favorite. And I, on that dive, I realized to my, well now it's to my right, the little patch of reef that I was looking for was over there. So now on my next dive, I know where I need to be heading. And you can see again, I'm getting my gun ready ahead of time. It just gives me a jump start on my next breathe up. You can see I'm eyeballing the boat here. I know about 
ballpark where that actual patch is. So I'm eyeballing the boat. This is kind of tricky. I'm fighting current, trying to maintain my position. So I make sure I land on the spot I'm looking for. I just use the boat as a reference. And all this stuff I'm sharing, I mean, doesn't necessarily mean this is the right way, the only way to do it, this is just my way. There's a hundred different ways to do these types of things, hunting techniques, surfacing, diving, holding your breath, all that stuff has different, different techniques, different ways to do things. Mine is not necessarily right. I just am sharing mine personally. So this is the actual patch I was looking for. I actually landed on it this time. A couple of groupers squeaking around and Mr. Mangrove that I'm looking for. And again, I try to get that fish to me. That fish, I stoned it, but he was still twitching, which is a good way to attract sharks. And I plan on making a shark episode. A lot of you guys have asked about that, but it's not trouble that I go looking for, so I'm kind of having to save up footage for it. Um, but I do intend and plan on making a shark episode in the future. We're going to go to the next spot. We're going to go to the next. Okay. Dude, look at all these mangroves. These things are huge. Like, what a gorgeous. God. Got two like that. So I was I was running to a new spot. You can see this is I'm running. The bottom's a little like fuzzy and kind of distorted and it gets clear here, so I slowed down. I marked that big ball of life, so I'm gonna go back there and check it out. New spot, have a dove it. Whenever you're ready, give me like a thumbs up or something. Mm. So there is something about a new spot. I don't know if this feeling will ever go away, but the older I get, it does not change. Something about a new spot makes you feel so excited like a little kid. Like you don't know what's gonna be down there. You can see the amount of life that came up to greet us. Um, but a new spot just gets me so amped. Uh, so this is my first drop. Never dove this in my life. Um, just always super exciting. So I'm kind of scanning. You can see right away groupers everywhere. There's one really nice one there, a bunch of small ones, some mangroves. There's a couple muttons that are barely picked up in the frame. I'm lining up on this man this mangrove. There's a big black behind it, and I see a kubera come in. And I've talked about this before. These kuberas are so tricky. Watch this fish actually reacts as I pull the trigger. You can see his dorsal jumps right when I pull the trigger and he dodges the shaft. I didn't even hit the fish. Um, nice red grouper there, spooked. There was fish all over this spot. And I've spoke, I've talked about kuberas in the past and if I had two bands, may have been a little faster, I may have been able to gotten, uh, got a shot on that fish. But that's one of the reasons kuberas are so hard to hunt and land is they're very smart, they're very shifty. And even if you do get a shot on one, they're extremely armored. Their scales scales are super thick. Um, but I thought that was pretty cool. That fish literally heard my gun click and turned and literally dodged a shot. It was awesome. Good on him. Muttons, kuberas, mangroves, everything. Blacks, reds. <laughs> And I've spoken in the past, um, a lot of times I don't shoot kuberas just because I see a decent amount of them, but they're not as common as the other fish. And it's really nice to have my clients shoot them because a lot of people, it's a pretty cool fish to shoot. It's something they don't get an opportunity to shoot very often. So it's a trophy fish for a lot of people, but it's nice to shoot one every now and again. They taste just as good as mangrove. Um, I think personally they're as good as a mangrove snapper, just a little, they get a little bigger. Kind of scanning. This guy comes in, gives me a nice broadside. Big old moray eel down there. I don't know if you saw it beforehand. 
they don't ever really give me trouble. Sometimes grouper hunting, I've had a couple bite me when I'm pulling groupers out of rocks because a lot of times they hang in similar, similar spots, but they normally don't give you too much trouble. I turned my camera on late on this one. I was already halfway down. And in a lot of my videos, you'll hear me grunt. Mm, 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 mm. Like that. And um, just something to sometimes it works. Sometimes it makes fish curious. And they worked on that when he turned right at me. Um, groupers will do it. I don't know if they... I'm assuming when I... Based on the situations I hear them do it, I'm assuming it's a defense mechanism. But a lot of times it, it makes fish turn on you. for the grunt. Yeah. So I wanted to get some third person. This is Ross going down. Just a different aspect that you don't really get to see with the, the camera on the mask and it's hard to ask people to come out and film me all day. Ross does a drop. This is the same spot. There was fish all over. I passed on so many muttons on this spot. Rush, rush. Ross lines up, gets him a nice shot on a mutton snapper. I kind of wanted to hang near the fish just in case anybody came in. Um. Again, letting that letting that fish dangle like that, especially when it's still especially when it's still alive, um, definitely can draw attention. Another nice grouper there. So many groupers, goodness. As I always talk about, YouTube land makes things seem a certain way. I'm just showing you guys the highlights. There was another 10, 15 dives that I had that I didn't shoot anything. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, you shoot fish all the time, every single dive. It's not true. I'm, sh I'm showing you guys the highlights. There's a lot of times I'm out there, I'm not shooting anything. I'm not shoot seeing any fish. So many days we drift for Wahoo, don't see a single Wahoo. Um, YouTube kind of gives you this false sense. I passed on a mutton there. There's a different Kubera. You can see he's got a scar on his back, and I've got one band. That fish is on its way out. There's no reason to even ch no reason to even chase that fish. A nice red there. It looked like. Another big mutton. I saw, I don't know if it was the same Kubera or a different one. This one had a scar in his back. I just, with one band, there's no really reason to take a shot at him. I left the mutton. I mean, I, we got a couple nice fish here. That's a, that is a really cool find for a new spot. Yeah. Ton of life. Ton of life. There's so many blacks. It's insane. I'll save that one for next time. It's a nice fish for anybody. Like that, that is a nice fish for anybody, dude. Yeah. Thank Good you, bro. That's awesome. Yeah, that, that was another one a little smaller than that one when I just dropped. So that was a really cool find. 
I don't know if this is. Hopefully that's clear. Super cool find. Literally, I just showed you. I ran over, marked bait, dropped the anchor. Um, the boat kind of swung a little. I'm a little deeper now. It's kind of a. Seems that it rolls from like 40 to like 55. Um, there was, I don't know how much the camera picked up. There was three or four legal muttons, legal red, probably three or four legal blacks, one over 20. Kubera, mangroves, um, the list goes on. Ross got him a nice mutton. You Shot a nice um, mangrove. I'm gonna save that one for a later date. There was just a ridiculous amount of life there. So I think we're gonna probably hit one more spot. We'll see, maybe one more spot and then go see what the blue water stuff looks like. It's kind of dirty inside, so that may not be an option, but. We shall press on. So this is the last spot of the day. Uh, the When we anchored up, we were in 60. The anchor actually drug a little. And again, I landed on sand. Um, after I had got in, the boat moved just a smidge. And once I got back in the boat, this was actually almost 75 feet. And that mutton came in. If I, I would have pulled the trigger right when I lined up on him, I may have had a chance with one band. Oh, kind of oh, tough oh, there oh. just wasn't having it he was out over the sand just kind of cruising around if i'd had two bands that that would have been a shot fish but that's a tough shot you can see that that's the patch i'm looking for i just landed a little bit off of it i was on the deep edge and that sand was about 75 actually you can, you can tell on my ascent how much deeper it was it takes quite a bit longer Big mutton. I hesitated. I should have took the shot, but I was waiting for a stone shot because I only had one band. So now I know where the edge is. Swam up to the front of the boat and uh, did my breathe up on the anchor line instead. That way, I just kind of got a jump start of getting closer to those rocks where they were. It's more like a patch reef kind of deal. This one's kind of isolated. And me personally, I don't mind this fuzzy water. Everywhere else in the Florida, this is crystal clear. Down here, this is considered dirty water, but I personally enjoy it. I feel like I do better and I feel like I hunt better because the fish don't see it coming. But again, I did my grunt there. You can see a couple muttons actually come into the frame and I see that big one again. He's kind of down and away and he tucks behind this rock, which gives me a chance to kind of make a jump on him. And that was a little farther than I honestly was comfortable, but I, it was the end of the day and I was like, screw it. I think I got a good enough shot and got lucky there. And I wasn't sure if the flopper had gone all the way through. So I kind of baby this fish a little bit. I just talked about not leaving that fish dangling. I didn't want to pull on it too hard because I know I did enough damage to the fish that it's probably going to die. But I didn't want to pull the shaft out because that's going to be a really tough fish to locate. So I kind of babied him just, just so I didn't pull the shaft out of the fish. And quite honestly, I hadn't seen any sharks this day. Maybe one nurse shark. There wasn't any bulls or lemons or anything like that. So I felt pretty comfortable. That is all I've got underwater. Stay tuned. We make an incredible recipe. Um, enjoy the rest of the video. That is a good one to end it on. Will you open that um, for me? So I, I, I lost a band in the middle of the day. It's stuck. And um, it was kind of fun to be honest with you. It was almost like between a pole spear and um, between a pole spear and a spear gun. It was a little disadvantage. I had to get a little closer, but I enjoyed it. And boy, did we got some fish. I think um, we did so well. We're probably gonna forego the the blue water drift and. Quite honestly, we've got some really bad wind coming Monday, so we're decided, that if you're wondering where all this is going, this is stocking up for the week, so. 
we've got plenty of fish to eat while the wind blows for five days and um, we're done out here long story short so i wanted to pull these out and actually repack them i wanted to show you this was about three hours of diving this is insane heck of a lot of really really nice snappers um and like i said none of this is going to waste i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is pull them all out pull some of the ice out add salt water and pack them all in there nice and deep so they they ice properly um, we'll get some filleted up later and come up with a recipe all right so mutton for dinner um trying a little different angle so you guys can look at the backyard and not have to look at me and somebody that refers to themselves my words not mine on youtube is old fart or old fat man or something left sent me this knife so i'm gonna use it thank you old fart <laughs> probably a little bit of overkill but makes me feel like that guy in aladdin so if you've watched my videos for a while you know that this is going to sound snobby. Mutton's not my favorite. Don't get me wrong. I'll eat mutton all day. But if I have a choice, I'm going to eat something else. Um, but my good friends, James and Lisa, just got into town. Uh, we actually dove today. I iced this fish overnight. Um, and James is pretty talented in the kitchen. So I told him I had a mutton. I don't want to use any of their fish that they shot today. So mutton is it's going to be for dinner. I think he said something about blackened mutton and some type of fancy grits. Which I am a huge fan of shrimp and grits, so I'm happy to try it. Yeah, this knife is complete overkill. I need to use this for a swordfish. I'll save this another day, old fart or fat man, whatever your name is. I will say it is sharp though, good lord. All the way to the ribs. And I'm a fan of serrated, I take the bones. I've talked about this before. Some people cut over them. so bad not so bad for using a samurai sword I don't know if I'm gonna be able to skin with this sure why not Beautiful. And there we are. Tuna wants some. Tuna can't have any. There you go. <laughs> Thanks again, old fart. Kitchen. Eight cups of water. Oh, come on. What you got there? Oh, yes. <laughs> we are in the kitchen. You have a we're, glass, James, we're gonna do some mutton James? snapper. What is this called, James? Yeah. Mutton snapper oh, a la good. grits. Blackened mutton over truffle gouda grits. Truffle gouda. Ooh. So we're gonna show you everything we need. Have you done this before? Oh, did you got Kerrygold? He knows what he's doing. This is the good stuff. So we've got some Kerrygold butter, grits. I think this is parsley. 
white truffle oil. Like one of these. Mm. Pulper Domes, mm. the OG, and some sea salt. Yeah. James is setting the stage. I'm excited. I like grits. I like shrimp and grits. I like everything blackened. So, and as you know, I'm not a huge fan of mutton. I'll eat it. It sounds kind of snobby, but I'm excited to try this. So we're going to get it going and we're going to channel our inner will and have wine out of a coffee cup. <laughs> In the comments, uh, on one of the most recent videos, like four or five people were like, this guy really misses this will character. I hope he comes home. <laughs> <laughs> we do miss him. All right. Anyways, we're going to get it going. We'll see you in a sec. We'll Heavy blackening. Down. Yes. If you've been following for a while, you've met James before. Um, he's a world-renowned photographer, very good friend of mine. Him and Lisa, she's in the shower. Um, they come down, what, two times a year-ish? No, we do some diving, kind of goof off. Two times a year at least. Um, I'll put his info in the description. He does some prints. We have all kinds of his work around the house. Here's a couple. He's a very, very talented individual. Right here. Got a lot of his stuff. They're all over. He's a semi-amateur really? semi professional chef <laughs> in the making. <laughs> so every time he comes, he teaches me something new. This is looking like a hot spring. You can sit in there. So what do we put in there? It's Gouda? A little Gouda. Mm -hmm. A pound of Gouda. A pound? Yeah. Holy moly. How long does that take to like actually melt? Minutes. Minutes, really? Yeah. Kind of got like a napalm-y texture going on. <laughs> good gouda -y. I'm impressed with how fast that melted. It does. It does a good job. Can I tell you something? Hmm. I've never made grits in my entire life. That's really... You haven't? Like, literally, I've never made them. Surprising. And you're marrying a Texas girl? I'm gonna try. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's this? <laughs> the elusive truffle oil? Mm-hmm. Just a dollop? Oh, a little extra okay. dollop? A little extra. Can't hurt. And that was my first time tasting that, I'll be honest with you. I didn't even know what truffle was. I'm a pretty simple individual. If you want to see, Roland white truffle oil. And I will say it's a very, very powerful flavor. Is that potent? Powerful? Is yeah, that right? powerful. Ooh, you can smell it. Mm-hmm. This is cool. I'm excited. We should make a candle out of that. Ooh. Ooh. A truffle candle? That might be a thing. Yeah. You might be onto something. The umami candles. Just trademark by Pal and Malin. Not to use by anybody by Pal and Malin. <laughs> <laughs> Very rare. So carry gold. Is there anything else in there? No. We'll carry gold. Oof, lots of blackening. It was really just to have some like green on the plate. It's, like, it's about there's, color. Like, yeah, it's yellow. It's, and it's like, variety. Hunting. There's no like vegetable flavor. It'll be good. Have this like you'll see the episode of our bed. There's just like white corn cake. You will not see that. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I wish you guys could smell this. I got awfully quiet. Everybody's focused. <laughs> Alright, who's taste tester? Look at the salad, Lisa. So <laughs> pesto. <laughs> I'm excited for this. I've already tasted the grits, I'm not gonna lie to you. This is gonna be mine. That is not yours. Get out of here. <laughs> Get a little bite with both. All right, babe. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not Which one do you want? Tester. I'm not taste tester. You're a taste tester. Come here. All right, I'm taste tester. <laughs> oh, poopy paws. That is all right. Oh, I didn't even garnish. Oh my god. Oh, what? wait, wait, the parsley, no! <laughs> That's what it's supposed to look like. Dude, the flavor? Oh my gosh. I'm, oh, not, I'm not lying to you. I the paid, savory I between... I for that. The savory of the grits and like the... 
the black thing. Somebody else try it. This is unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Come here, babe. <laughs> you guys gotta try this one. And I don't even like button snapper. Wow. Ooh, it's hot. That is all we've got. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching, as always. Big thanks to James. Yeah. Bobcat Lisa. <laughs> we will see you guys on the next one. Later. I don't even know what he means. Maybe Just kidding. Can... Episode's not over. Real quick, I had to show you this. We woke up. Weather turned to crap, so we're not diving today. We had a little bit of mutton snapper left over. And James made blackened mutton snapper eggs benedict. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Voila. <laughs> now for real. See you on the next one. Later. <laughs>